What is insulin resistance and is it really caused by saturated fats in the food? Hi, I'm Dr. Eric Westman and welcome to my channel where I review and debunk nutritional misinformation online. In this video, we're going to hear from Talking With The Docs. I've reviewed their channel sometime in the past and, and I kind of like their style. They, they're surgeons who talk about lots of different things, including lifestyle. And here they're going to have an expert guest on their, their podcast and let's see what they say about insulin resistance and the root cause. Insulin resistance, what is it? What can you do about it? How can you avoid it? We have an expert here to talk about it. I'm Dr. Paul Zalza. I'm Dr. Brad Wing. How sweet the sound. Hi. Welcome Dr. Amanda Maroney, Lifestyle Medicine. You've, oh. you've known her from before. She's done great videos with us. This is yes. a really critical topic. Thank you so much for coming. Always consider the source. So lifestyle medicine is actually a subgroup of lifestyle medicine. It's not all of lifestyle medicine. The organizational system is actually grown and supported pretty much only a plant-based sort of view. And they've been actually active against people who eat meat. This is just a, a fact of what lifestyle medicine, where it came from and what it preaches. I've even had occasion to be on the same podium with people who are in this group and they don't really take kindly to people who see things in a different way. So this is going to be the classic old paradigm view of what insulin resistance is. I want to thank our friends at Element for sponsoring today's video. Element has a great mixture of sodium, potassium, and magnesium. Everything you need on a keto diet. But specifically, this raw, unflavored version, which is labeled with a blue, teal-colored banner. This teal-colored, raw, unflavored version does not contain stevia, sugar, or any additives except a science-backed mix of three electrolytes our bodies need in quantities that have been already measured out for you. This is great for a keto diet, but most important thing is that it tastes great. As you know, electrolytes are really important, especially if you're following a keto or a carnivore diet. Element is offering you a free sample pack with any order. That's eight single serving packages, free with any order. That's a great way to try it out and to share Element with a friend. Get yours at drinklmnt.com slash Eric Westman. This offer is only available at my link, drinklmnt.com slash Eric Westman. You'll find that in the description below. Thank you, Element, for sponsoring this video. Would you like to be the muscle or the liver? Muscle. I know, I thought you'd say the muscle. Particular cells and organs. We need to introduce two other players here. We've got glucose. So what is glucose? I've mentioned this a few times. Glucose is a molecule that our body, it's the body's primary fuel, right? So this is like gas for a, a car. Yeah, so this is another classic teaching, the old paradigm view, is that glucose is your main fuel. Well, it turns out it's not, even if you're a big carb eater, because you're eating fat and you're eating protein and you're eating carbs and really all of those are what you're fueling your body on. But the uh, glucocentric model here of teaching is, is so common. And you're going to hear in the video about how important carbs are. And you have to have a, remember, no, there is no essential carbohydrate, meaning you don't have to eat them. Your body can make as much as it needs. But again, the, the explanation here is based on a certain paradigm. The, you know, it was a, a big leap to go from the earth being the center of the universe to the sun being the center of the universe, but it really helped explain and predict the, where things were in the sky. That's really how that change happened. So let's see if this explanation really helps us to predict and, and treat, which is what we're trying to get you to understand the logical treatment. So that's, that's glucose. And then we have insulin. The so big eye. The big eye. Okay the big eye in the sky. So insulin is the hormone that your body releases in order to utilize glucose in your body. 
So that's commonly said, and yet most of the glucose gets into the cells without insulin. So there are glucose receptors that don't require insulin for the glucose to get in. So here they're really talking about muscle uptake of, of glucose, which is insulin requiring. And so interesting, but this is how it's commonly taught. The, the shortcuts that you need insulin to take glucose into the cells. No, it's not true. Cells that really need glucose don't require insulin to get the glucose into the cell. The red blood cells, for example, not needing insulin to get glucose in there because the red cells need glucose. So except for the brain, the brain is like the hoarder of the glucose. It is your master control center. It needs a lot of energy and its primary source of fuel is glucose. So it just crosses the blood, you know, brain barrier and it gets absorbed. There's no special, it does not need insulin to absorb. And, this and that's true. However, the brain can shift to using ketones. And so the old paradigm view is that everyone eats carbs. It's normal, it's optimal. And we describe what happens when everyone eats carbs. And that's what you're hearing here. If you're not eating carbs, your brain shifts to using ketones. We don't know exactly how much, probably 70 to 80% of the brain can use ketones. And you know, you can know that just by how well your brain is working when you're not eating carbs. <laughs> give, give the first few weeks a, a, a break, you know, uh, but after you're keto adapted, the brain does fine using ketones and does not use glucose as much. And is, though you don't need insulin to get glucose into the brain or the red cells, uh, she didn't mention that because that's kind of the new paradigm view of which cells really do need glucose and red cells are one of them, red blood cells. So let's just look at Paul. Paul's mm -hmm. head mm -hmm. is going to be our insulin receptor. A receptor is basically what the insulin binds to, to, to open things up for the cell. Right. And I want to put your hands like this. This is your transport channel for the glucose. Got it. So normally blood, you know, blood glucose enters and we've got the insulin secreted, it binds to the receptor, yeah. and then the, sends a bunch of signals through the muscle cell, and the, the glucose transport channel opens up. Hey, well, think of it though, when you're not eating carbs, when the blood glucose doesn't go up and you don't have all of the insulin to facilitate the glucose entry into the muscle cells, the other cells that need glucose are using glucose, and the muscle cells are using fat. So some people look at this and say that, you know, the old paradigm, this is just normal. The new paradigm is, well, you know, maybe glucose shouldn't be used in the muscle cells all the time. And that's why insulin is sort of a, a, a key and lock mechanism so that you can preserve glucose for the brain and red cells, the white cells, other parts of the kidney and, and those that really need the glucose. And so only under situations where you're eating carbs, will we use the muscle to facilitate the glucose going in with insulin. So it's not necessarily optimal, although it's normal. And this is the way it's taught is that everyone eats banana. Well, you may not be eating bananas and this may not be applying to you anymore. And the sugar can get in and it either gets used right away by the muscle cell or gets stored away as something called glycogen. Right there, later. Okay, just check out the pipes. Like it, yeah. Nice, I like that. Fancy, yeah. And then as this happens, the blood sugar level, the blood glucose level goes down and then the... So think here, hold this thought, that insulin allowed glucose to get into the muscle. It was insulin and the carb eating and the glucose rise that allowed the glucose to get into the muscle. The glucose is then stored and we're going to hear a kind of a shift in the story in just a minute, which is really curious. The brain needs sugar, needs glucose all the time to function properly. So when in, in normal situations between meals, when there's no glucose around, what happens is the liver is constantly making its own glucose from amino acids and other compounds, not from carbohydrates. So it's making its own, so you can just hold this glucose sure. here. That's its normal job. Yeah, so the gluconeogenesis from the liver and the kidneys and maybe even other cells that we're just learning about can give you enough glucose 
without eating carbohydrates. She's not saying that. That's the new paradigm view. So then what happens in insulin resistance? Mm -hmm. So I mentioned very kind of tongue in cheek that insulin resistance is when the, the body is resistant to insulin. But what that means is there is something getting in the way of that signal, specifically in the muscle cells. And that something is actually might surprise you. A lot of people think it's about sugar. I'm eating a lot of sugar. And sugar and refined carbohydrates do overload the system. It floods the system. It makes the, the pancreas squirt out a lot of insulin. So that is part of the, the key factor. But the actual factor is saturated fat. What? Wait a minute. I was following the logic here until now enter something that everyone knows is terrible for you. It's not. But it, it's as if somehow saturated fat had to get into this story because the people who are teaching this in the old paradigm villainize and demonize saturated fat. So of course it's the culprit and let's just see how. Saturated fat, fat that you also wear in your body. So, you know, central obesity, you know, when you have a lot of fat that's in close to your, your organs, that's called visceral fat and saturated fat in your diet. So saturated fat in your diet, and we'll talk about where we find that. Okay. Actually, I'll just say it now. So saturated fat is typically found in processed foods, right? Of course, carbs are in there too. But the more I, I see this, the more that this really is just a story to make up, to have you not eat saturated fat or fat or animal products. It, it's, uh, let's see the logic here. Um, saturated fat also happens in natural foods like, you know, red meats, you know, non-lean cuts of meat. It, it also occurs in butter. It's very high prevalent in, you know, a lot of our dairy products. So cheese is 70% saturated mm. fat. Eggs have some saturated fat, also have some polyunsaturated fat as well. And, and just for note, this doesn't happen. Polyunsaturated fats, these healthy fats, omega-6, omega-3, do not cause insulin resistance. So they're not the issue. It's just saturated fat. Yeah, the, okay. The, so the logic starts to break down here. Fatty liver disease like, is a precursor to diabetes. Yes. It, it's a precursor wow. to insulin resistance. Why? Because remember the job of the insulin is to stop the production of glucose when we have glucose in our bloodstream because we've eaten it. So we have eaten blood glucose. The insulin can no longer bind. So the, the liver just keeps doing its thing. It's, yeah. it's, it's now pumping out even more sugar. Yeah. So when you pump out more glucose, I'm using glucose and sugar interchangeably for the sake of the discussion. Yeah. But when, you, when you're pumping out more and more glucose, the blood sugar level rises and it's saying, hey, pancreas, do something about this. So the pancreas starts to squirt out more and more and more insulin. And insulin also causes you to store more fat. Wow, that's the cause. Insulin storing the fat the cause of the saturated fat. There you go. In your muscles. So then you're making the progress, the process even worse. And or it's the beginning of it all. For years, I've heard the lifestyle medicine, that, yeah, it's a group that just doesn't want you to eat meat for whatever reasons they have. And this idea that saturated fat in the cell is caused by the saturated fat in the food has just been, how should I say, been dispelled because it's from the carbohydrates and the insulin that the fat gets into the cell. It's not the fat in the food. And it, I, I try to explain the other hypothesis that it's just the insulin and you lower the insulin and the insulin resistance goes, in fact, the saturated fat in the cell goes away. So that the idea that it's the saturated fat in the food is just as illogical as the idea that saturated fat in the food is the cause of the fat on your arteries, which is really from inflammation. But again, this is the old paradigm view. And some people can adopt or, or can account or agree that there are different views and others can't. And so she just said that it was the insulin that caused the saturated fat. And what raises the insulin is the carbs, not the saturated fat in the food. Actually, it was kind of silly. The, the hat thing, the saturated fat coming out of nowhere, it's because people don't want you to eat saturated fat for other reasons, I'm afraid. And, or, yes, it is the saturated fat 
in the cell, but you can target it by cutting carbs, which leads to weight loss and a reduction in the saturated fat in the cell. And that's kind of the diplomatic way to say it, that there are multiple ways to fix this, even if it is saturated fat in the cell, that's the cause. You don't have to use an approach that target saturated fat in the food if you get the reduction in insulin and glucose from whatever you're using, like a keto diet. Well, I have to say that the passion was great and it's the old paradigm view. And I thought this was a great video for going through the detail of the glucose and insulin receptors and how saturated fat has been implicated in insulin resistance, but also in how insulin levels that are high really should be lowered through lifestyle or, or medication. If you have type two diabetes, they've measured it and probably diagnosed it by a blood glucose or a hemoglobin A1C level. Have them measure your insulin level at the beginning, at the early diagnosis. If your insulin level is high, then that level should be lowered. Like every good endocrinologist, if the thyroid's high, you lower it. If cortisol's high, you lower it. If insulin's high, you lower it. You don't give more insulin. If you like this, please like, subscribe, ring the notification bell, and look out for new content on Wednesdays and Fridays. If you enjoyed this video, consider joining our YouTube membership for early access and exclusive live Q and A's with me. Just click the join button below or support us with a PayPal in the description.